yeah the difference between struts 1x and 2x architectures coming to this struts 1x and 2x architectures differences here i can see the comparisons in case of struts 1x every first input form request first input request it will go to action surlet action surlet will create a proper bean class object after that it will forward your request to request to processor request to processor finally will do validation skier controller operations skier in case if there is any initialization operations that initialization operations action surlet will do here itself means this step will execute first then after it will read input request input request for that input request form bin object it will create then later your request it will forward to request to processor request to processor will execute required validations here request to processor will execute required controller operations here finally request to processor only will forward us a output page finally it will forward us a output page finally it will forward as output page but coming to struts 2x architecture whenever you submit your input request first request will go to filter dispatcher or struts prepare and execute filter this filter dispatcher or struts prepare and execute filter what they will do just they will forward your request to action mapper class action mapper class will do what by using configuration manager class reference by using cm configuration manager by using configuration manager by using configuration manager class it will read your xml file data it will read your struts xml file data we have to create a struts xml file in the struts xml file we have to configure all the mapping configurations so that mapping data a configuration manager will read this configuration manager will forward data to action mapper using configuration manager object action mapper will read your xml file data then it will find out a proper mapping then it will i mean it will find out a proper mapping for your action whenever you submit a form for that form we need to configure action for that action action mapper will find out the proper action from your struts xml file then after finding proper action this struts prepare and execute filter it will forward request to it will forward your request to action proxy it will forward your request to action proxy finally this action proxy will execute your controller here finally your proxy will execute your controller it will execute your controller that controller you need to extend from action support that controller you need to extend from action support so here in this controller what you can do validations you can do here validations you can do here controller operations also you can do here your action proxy what it will do before executing your controller here we have some handler components here we have some handler components that handlers will execute first handler components means interceptors action proxy will call one by one one by one all these interceptors finally it will execute your controller then response also will go through in the same way finally action proxy will take response that response it will forward to your filter that response it will forward to filter finally your filter will forward us output page finally your filter will forward us output page in case if action proxy if it requires any data from xml file that data it will read from configuration manager configuration manager will pass data to action proxy means action proxy will consume data from configuration manager which data xml file data by reading xml file data it will understand which interceptors you need to execute for your controller so the main required components are here one is action mapper one is configuration manager one is action proxy and these are what interceptors interceptors interceptor and finally this one is controller these are the main required components and the front controller name is filter dispatcher is a front controller so you can see the difference between these two architectures in this architecture front controller is servlet here front controller is servlet coming to this struts two architecture here front controller is a filter class okay here they given two filters filter dispatcher or struts prepare and execute filter okay coming to helper classes how many helper classes here they given they given one request to processor helper class only one request to processor helper class only this request to processor need to do like form bin validation operations and action operations finally this request to processor only need to do forward operations also okay forwards between form to form forwards every forwarding operations also need to handle by request to processor only but coming to this struts 2 architecture forward operations will done by action mapper action mapper will do forward operations whenever you submit request your request it will forward to your controller classes using action mapper action mapper will forward request to us first so based on your input action 
action mapper by reading configuration manager data from XML file. It will understand which action class need to execute for your input. So that particular action class it will request using action proxy. Action proxy will prepare a controller proxy object by combining controller object data and as well as interceptors object data. By combining interceptors and controller, finally it will prepare a proxy object. It will prepare a proxy object. On that proxy, it will execute your controller job. After that, finally, it will give response to start to prepare an execute filter. It will forward a response finally. Okay. This is the uh, like uh, difference between these two architectures. Okay. Understand? So, this is Struts 2 architecture and this one is Struts 1x architecture. Struts 2 main components are what developer need to write. In case of Struts 1x, developer need to create input pages. Developer need to create input pages. Developer need to create output pages. Developer need to write form bean classes. Developer need to write action classes. In case if you require any plugin, developer need to write plugin classes. Coming to this struts 2x, you need to write input pages, output pages and here you have to configure data in struts xml file and you need to write only one single controller class. And if you require interceptors also you can write. And these components, configuration manager, action mapper and action proxy, internal components. Okay, those are internal components so that you no need to write them. Okay, just for your input and output, you need to write a single controller class. If you require interceptors, you can write interceptors here. Okay. So, coming to this struts 2x, just for our input, we need to create a simple controller. From that controller itself, validations and controller operations we can execute. Coming to validations here, they are providing three supports. Validations using XML file, validations using programmatic approach, validations using annotations. Okay, three styles we have for annotation, I mean for validations. Coming to controller operations, if you want to handle multiple button operations or multi-form operations, by using simple expression, you can handle them here. So, you no need to, I mean, here we don't have classes like, like dispatch action class, lookup dispatch, like mapping dispatch. We don't have those many classes. Here for this action class layer, for this action class layer, we have many classes. For this action form layer, we have many classes. How many components all around we have here for action form? We have, for action form we have, yeah, action form classes. We have an action form, Dyna, action form, validator form, Dyna validator form. And validator action form. Dyna validator action form. So these many action form classes we have. Coming to action classes we have dispatch action, lookup dispatch action, event dispatch action, okay, mapping dispatch action. And we have event dispatch action. And the first one is action. So all around five action classes, six validation classes, five controller classes they are given here. Coming to struts to X, here for doing validations and controller operations, only one class action support. only single component action support for doing validations and for doing as well as controller operations for your controller operations and as well as for your validations the only one class support here they given action support using single action support class you can execute validations and controller operations so that they reduced how many classes here almost instead of this six and this five they given only one single class using that single class you can do validations and controller operations Okay, just one single class they given. So now if you want to go through validations and controller operations, in struts 2x if you want to go through validations and controller operations, there they given two types, I mean three types of validations. In struts 2x they given three types of validations. So those validations are programmatic approach, struts 2x validations, XML file validations and as well as annotations. Coming to struts 2x validations part, struts 2x validations, there we have three types of validations, programmatic, 
and we have one declarative and we have one annotations programmatic declarative and annotations three types of validation supports they given in case of programmatic validations let's say if you have a input page let's say if you have input page with your fields like field name field 1 field 2 field 3 if you have multiple fields registered if you have fields three fields if you have three fields so for this form if you want to apply validations you need to write a simple bean class that bean class you need to extend from action support you need to write a bean class you need to write a simple bean class you need to write a simple bean class your bean class you need to extend from action support and in that action support your bean properties property f1 f2 f3 along with respective setter and getter methods and if it is a programmatic approach just you need to override a validate method here you can write validations in this class itself you need to write controller operations also validations here only you need to write and as well as controller operations also you need to write here in case if you want to handle your validations through xml file instead of overriding validate method here instead of overriding a validate method here for applying validations what you should do here for applying validations okay controller operations you can write by using execute method if you want to write validations then simple xml file you can create along with your class the xml file name you should maintain bean name hyphen validation dot xml file by using your bean name if you write a validation xml file and here if you write validations in xml file automatically it will read your validation xml file and will do validations from this xml file itself or else there is one more approach annotations approach using annotations if you want to apply validations just on top of your setter methods use annotations there are validation annotations use that validation annotations on top of your setter methods so here we have three convenient approaches using a validate method or else using validation annotations or else by using validation xml file also you can apply validations less configurations required here means if you follow naming conventions you don't need to configure anything in xml file if you follow naming conventions you don't need to configure anything in xml file just by using your form bean name if you create a xml file automatically by reading this xml file your validations will be performed who will perform who will do validations by reading this xml file some internal interceptors they given that interceptors what they will do they will find out xml files using your class names if they find validations they will execute from xml file itself okay so that less configurations required means you know in your structs xml file you don't need to use any plugins to read this xml files you don't need to configure any plugins by following naming conventions if it find any bean class name xml file that xml file will be executes automatically okay just three validation approaches we have